Good afternoon everyone. I am Dr. Dilip Kumar, Interventional Cardiologist and Device Specialist at Medica Super Specialty Hospital, Calcutta. I will be discussing about advanced management of heart failure and basically I will focus on device based therapy which is there which has revolutionized the heart failure therapy in last one decade. So when we treat heart failure it's just like treating a horse which is ill and all the options of uh, healing the horse, whipping the horse, unloading the wagon, slow the horse apply similarly to heart failure patients. If we want to uh, if we want to make the heart work harder with anotropes, we can unload with, in the, with the help of ACE inhibitors ARBs, we can slow the heart with help of beta blockers, we heal it, we heal the heart with revascularization procedures, we like buying a tractor for a uh, you know horse, it's like a, putting a ventricle assist device to these patients and finally the option, last option is cardiac transplant when we get a new heart for the patient, just like getting a new horse. So, considering coming to implantable devices which are going to help the patient after medical management has exhausted and these are basically implanted electrical devices, some mechanical circulatory devices, then there are devices which are valvular closure or replacement devices, then there has been work on stimulation heart failure devices and finally monitoring heart failure devices. These devices also help in knowing more about the patient and assisting the treatment. So coming to uh, the, the, the most you know uh, common indications and uh, implantations which are ICD implantable cardiac defibrillator therapy and we all know we have got enough of evidence in form of MADID2, SCD heft IV, uh, and, and many many more trials. <coughs> companion. So, these ICDs, CRTDs they work and we give it to all those patients who have uh, structural heart disease with VT and those patients with VT with uh, non-reversible causes, we implant these devices and also to those patients who have ejection fraction of less than 35 percent, especially post to my 40 day after 40 days and those patients who have non-ischemic heart disease with ejection fraction of less than 35 percent who are in NYHA class 2 or 3 as a primary prevention strategy if there are no reversible cause we can go for ICD implantation as well. After the ICD the next one is a CRT device and uh, we have a significant number of patients like 30 percent of patients of uh, terminal heart failure they have got IVCD that is intraventricular conduction de defect we also term it left bundle branch block and sometimes in non left bundle branch block uh, with a QRS of more than 150 milliseconds uh, we consider these patients uh, as a blessing in disguise usually these patients deteriorate faster but if we implant and synchronize these patients with CRT devices they do exceptionally well. So I will show you this case this was a 54 year old gentleman with a history of dual chamber pacemaker one year back and he presented with progressive shortness of breath for last six months and his ejection fraction was found to be 33 percent. This was the EKG of the patient showing every beat of the heart is paced from the right ventricle and probably this was the reason of his heart dysfunction that is called pacemaker induced cardiac dysfunction. We ruled out the coronaries and then the CRT uh, it was upgraded to a CRT device then we put a left ventricle lead, a, a coronary sinus LV lead and after putting the coronary sinus lead the ECG it became a narrow QRS with a right bundle branch block pattern and the patient improved in next three to four months and he was asymptomatic and is still doing well for the last three years. Similarly uh, this was a gentleman uh, with a history of do double valve replacement three years back with a poor ejection fraction of 28 percent with symptomatic class 3 and again this patient was given the device CRT device and he is still managing to do well and he is doing all his level activities and asymptomatically he is much better he is in now class 2. Sometimes when we have failed CRTs and because we are unable to place the third lead LV lead in proper uh, coronary sinus tributary posterolateral vein or 
uh, else metal cardiac vein then we have no option but still we can use something like uh, which is you know in, uh, still in investigation that is called epicardial LV lead uh, stimulating, stimulating the LV not going for epicardial pacing but from outside the heart there is another device which will communicate with the RARV device and it will exactly fire at the same interval which is going to uh, contract the left ventricle at right timing. So this way it is being you know resynchronized. You can see a standard ICD, a transmitter, subpectoral, this is the sub battery, subcutaneous battery for the transmitter and there is a wireless AV electrode which stimulates the left ventricle. This is one uh, uh, you know uh, modality of treatment in failed CRT uh, is underway and if successfully one of the trials select LV study uh, they found that by V pacing was achieved in 97.1 percent and 88.5 percent at one and six months with this kind of you know attempt. So it shows promising, promising clinical response and it can be an option in future. We have got many patients who are on CRT devices or are not candidate for CRT devices on ICD poor retroventricular function, reverse call right, but still the patient, uh, the heart is failing. And then we have got the options that these are mechanical circulatory devices and amongst the mechanical circulatory devices, there are devices which act on acute basis, you know, short term basis and there, there are devices which gives chronic support to the heart in form of durable ventricular assist device. So in the temporary support, we have uh, ECMO, we have uh, impeller, and in chronic device, devices, we have uh, left LVADs and we have got you now heartmed devices, thoracic devices. This is how it looks like. It takes the blood from the left ventricle and the, it is pumped into the aorta and this is the vest the patient wears. This is the newer one that is HVAD. It is a totally, uh, it, is imp it can be implanted in the precordium, even inside the per pericardium and it weighs only 160 gram and there is no abdominal scar mark in these uh, patients who are implanted with HVAD. So gradually this LVAD technology uh, is coming and gaining ground uh, very fast in the last three to four years and the, with the, because of the prohibitive cost to many of the patients, once the cost will come down, this is a very good alternate and, uh, and, and an effective th therapy for those patients who are terminally ill and who have got no options left. This is an HVAD and connected to aorta. It's not difficult to implant and the patient with a small two scars and patient uh, can live a better life. There has been some there, some uh, complications but most of them are now uh, manageable. ECMO is a short term support to heart, we give it to you know failing heart, you basically more the cases in uh, complex cardiac surgical cases the ECMO is being used more and more and impeller device is easier to implant and is, it gives around uh, 5 liter of flow. Uh, and it's, 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 it's quite effective therapy when we are dealing with high, high risk complex PCIs. There are some valve devices which uh, can repair uh, particular pathology like uh, mitral regurgitation can be taken care with mitral clips, severe aortic stenosis can be taken care with tower and uh, both the device, both these techniques, technology has proven uh, has shown their superiority and uh, their results. Uh, recently run COAP trial present in TCT 2018 showed a severe mortality reduction and number needed to treat was less than 10. So in secondary MR these, 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 this mitral clip they are uh, quite a promising you know tool uh, for these patients. And uh, Tower is now uh, moving towards high, in high risk cases, independent risk cases to low risk cases as well. Coming to stimulation devices, there are some devices which, can, which aim to uh, do some cardiac contractive modulation firing at particular time of 
you know your action potential and uh, you know <coughs> QRS uh, but still they are uh, they have not shown very conclusively the results are not uh, you know uh, time will tell uh, where this uh, contactless device as a neuromodulation is going to stand or not so these are under investigation and still uh, it's, it's too premature to say something about that and finally we have got some monitoring, monitoring devices we have given everything to patient medical management all possible device help or LVAD but still we would like to know how these patients are faring when they are going uh, you know going back to their home and normal activities and we can put some wireless pulmonary artery devices and uh, implantations and then we can come to know about the pulmonary artery pressures of these patients on day to day basis and it can come on our smartphone and we can kind of monitor these patients their PA pressures uh, uh, and, and we can make out the heart failure is worsening or in which way it is going so these are heart pressure monitoring systems which may be in near future will be a great tool uh, for many patients, terminal ill patients with many devices and many interventions done. So thank you all. I hope this summary of device therapy and heart failure, uh, the talk uh, might give you a glimpse and uh, an idea about how the therapy uh, has been, you know, in last five years, one decade has revolutionized the treatment of heart failure. Thanks a lot and thank you again.